And I want to say thank you very, very much for joining us. We are so honored to have all of our guests here, and especially someone that's very special to me, Dr. Alveda King. So this is amazing to see everybody out here. I'm like totally glowing in my red dress. <laughs> I think all of us are fired up and really have become activists and it is pretty incredible. We've seen something, we saw something, and now we're making that change. And ultimately, our red tsunami is going to be massive come November. We're gonna vote to cab red, aren't we? Now, as you all know, the cab is the third largest county in Georgia now, per the census, and we're the second bluest county. So we have a lot of work to do, but because of all of you coming out and being involved in the DeKalb GOP, we have a chance, at the very least, to make DeKalb more purple. And ultimately, someday, we will vote DeKalb red. So I appreciate all the support that you have been giving us. So with that said, I, would, I know we were a little off schedule, so I'm gonna try to get us back on schedule this morning. We're very honored to have Dr. Lisa Noel Babbage author, educator, and activist join us for our opening prayer, and uh, we're very grateful that you're here with us today. Good morning, DeKalb County. I never wear red to a Mercy McCarthy event because she does it so well. Can we give it up for our chairman? All right, family, let's bow our heads in prayer. Heavenly Father, we just come to you today celebrating what unity looks like in DeKalb County. The power and purpose that you have moving down these streets, Lord, we thank you for what you're doing through every volunteer, every candidate, every representative here, and their families. Lord, we ask that you bless the food and bless this fellowship. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. amen. Thank you very much. I'm very honored to invite Dante Thompson up here, who is the chairman of the DeKalb Young Republicans. Good morning, DeKalb County. How are my fellow Republicans, conservatives, and independent thinkers doing? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, everyone, you can please stand. It's on a great flag. And we're ready. I pledge allegiance to the flag. I give honor to my country. I give honor to my President Trump. 
and most important of all, I honor my God. Yeah. Could you turn the music up some, please?
Georgia GOP Data Center training tomorrow, uh, February 21st, from 12:30 to 2 p.m. or 2:30 p.m. Love to see you come out and learn how the data center works. And we're going to vote to cab red, and we need all of you to learn this great tool so we can go out and canvas our communities. All right. Let's see. Um, on March 17th, uh, we will have our next DeKalb County Committee meeting. But I'm also excited on the front end of that meeting, we're gonna start a little bit earlier at six o'clock and we'll have pizza, uh, not to celebrate St. Patty's Day, but we're gonna have an election integrity open house. Um, we're gonna get to meet our brand new elections director, Keisha Smith. And we'll also have our, uh, our DeKalb representatives from the Board of Elections, Anthony Lewis, who's actually here today. Nancy, um, so we have, is our vice chairman. So anyway, we're gonna, we'll have more details coming on out, but we wanna start the, the process and the election year uh, with our brand new elections director off on the right foot, answer your questions, and you know, start the relationship off on the right foot. Okay, and then our next breakfast will be on March, come on down. <laughs> encourage all of you to join the DeKalb GOP. We are a growing organization and I'm probably going to say we're probably one of the fastest GOPs in the state of Georgia growing. So get your membership. We have a different levels of membership and participation. Um, if you want to join us as a county committee member, that is a $60 annual fee and that gives you the opportunity to vote. Um, not just vote the cab red, but vote on how, what kind of GOP you would like. So encourage you to come on out and be a part of the DeKalb GOP. We have five sponsors today and I want to thank each and every one of them and give them a little bit of an opportunity to speak. My first, um, my first sponsor and a candidate is TJ Hudson and he's running for Georgia Secretary of State. TJ, would you come on down and tell us why you speak next to the Secretary of State? TJ Hudson, I'm just going to give you a little uh, background about who I am, where I'm from. I'm from Trootland County. I'm part of the history books. Trootland County is named after the first governor of Georgia, John Adam Trootland. It's located about three hours south of here between Lawrence, which is Dublin, Tooth, which is right now you off of I-16. I'm born and raised there. I'm a former deputy, a former probate court judge. Um, I served 17 years on the bench. Whenever I was elected as probate court judge, I was the first black to ever be elected probate court judge male in the history of Georgia. So, uh, so I had the honor of being the president of all the probate court judges in the state, president of all the master court judges in the state, and president of leg of all the Georgia election officials in the state. I've done everything with the election from paper ballots to shoot leaders to the system we have now. Georgia has never had a Secretary of State that has election experience. Oh. I've done it for two decades. Wow. Wow. So, you have a congressman that's running for Secretary of State that's gonna fly a plane in. That's not impressive. I ride horses. <laughs> Secretary of State with no election experience. <laughs> <laughs> so, the Cal County, if you want it done right, if you want it fixed, ride with TJ Hudson as your next Secretary of State. Thank you, Marcy. And uh, Marcy does a great job over here. I'm always impressed when I come to the cab. 
Um, and Gary is uh, looking forward to coming as well. So we will um, probably do another one of these sponsorships and then come here again. Um, I want to first of all thank our Team 22. They're the reason I'm here today. They, uh, they helped me put this together. We've got one of the strongest grassroots team across the state. That's something that Gary's won three statewide races as ad commissioner. He's been the number one vote getter. Um, I want to point out Mike Rickman, who's over here. He's our DeKalb County Chair. So if you want to get involved and support us, uh, this is our man on the ground right here. We have a county chair in every single county, all 159 counties in the state of Georgia. We have 22 volunteers minimum in every county. And this is how we still win elections today, it's the grassroots, right? So I'm, proud, I'm very proud to work for Commissioner Black. Um, he is a what I would consider a true statesman. Um, he decided to, uh, in 2020, he needed to make a change. People tell me all the time, why is Gary running? He could be ad commissioner for the rest of his life. It's because when his grandson, Kemper, was born, he knew that we had to change things in the country. He knew that we need to fight for the future of his family and for the family of all Georgians out there. As a father of three, I, uh, I was leading a successful career. I, I packed him away to go join uh, Gary's team because that's how much I believe in him. So I hope that you guys consider supporting uh, Commissioner Black. I think he is the right man for the job um, and he's more than well qualified for it. So thank you all very much. to Gary as well. All right, well, I'd like to invite Jeff Buser up here. He is representing Josh Clark, who's also a candidate for U.S. Senate. So come on down, Jeff. Thanks for sponsoring our breakfast this morning as well. Hey, good morning, gang. Um, just want to say thank you all. I am a, uh, my, my name is Jeff Buser. I'm a campaign manager for Josh Clark and running for U.S. Senate. I'm a native of DeKalb County. And uh, I went to Brockville Elementary, went to Shamrock High School, and then ended up at Tucker. Uh, my wife went to Livesey Elementary and was a Tucker graduate. Uh, grew up First Baptist Decatur. My wife grew up at Holy Cross Catholic right there in Tucker as well, too. So it's so nice, even when you say, you know, that the cab is still one of the bluest state, just its counties within our, our state. Just recognize that when you really look at the quantity of Republican voters within the cab county, we're in top five still. I mean, it's strong. But it's strong because of what y'all do, and we just appreciate that so much. Josh is at another event. They're at a candidate's forum up in Franklin Springs, Georgia. When I looked at this event today, I said, Josh, you have fun. I'm coming back home to see the people I grew up with and say hey to them and thank them and just see y'all. I just really appreciate what y'all do. Uh, my life in the cap here, uh, 24 and a half years in commercial construction. Almost every building area around the Cap County I've been involved with it. You go to the Y at the Cap County Waymore Park. That's a project I helped build. You go to the 911 Mercy Call Center there behind the old service merchandise from Tucker's job I helped build. From Big Miller Road Missionary Baptist Church in Lithonia to the North Lake Church of Christ here off of Coolidge Road. It's construction that we did. The cab was one of our number one client. 24 and a half years of construction, and I love it. We're doing great. We're going strong. Some of our best years ever. And in December, God put on my heart to step down from that position that ended up being Chief Financial Officer of the company after many positions there because I knew the heart that Josh has. Um, I know what he's going after. I know what he's trying to do. I know what he's trying to accomplish. And it was something to me that I said, I don't want to see the rest of Georgia have to fight like the Cap County does to try and keep our state red. I say keep our state red for a good reason. Yeah. But I'm telling you, we all are fighting for a good reason, and we appreciate that. Uh, Josh is the only candidate, a little bit about him. I know he's going to come back and talk to you all. We're going to talk about getting on that schedule. We're going to meet with the women's group here soon, already scheduled. Josh, the only candidate that's had legislative experience. He served two terms in the House of Georgia. Um, 99th District, where his brother David Clark is serving right now. Two terms, walked away on a post. Felt like politics was not a career, but a time of service as a citizen to step in and do the job that he could do and then walk away. Felt like God has called him back into this race, seeking the highest legislative office in our land. Six years is not a time you want to gamble with someone. You check his track record, 100% proven conservative. All of his voting is that way. He's won the Defender of Life uh, Liberty Award. Huge pro-life, huge, huge use in that. Um, take a look at him. Take a look at all your candidates. Y'all are here because you invest your time and energy in that. Don't just vote for the popular vote. Vote for the candidate you know that's going to fight for Georgia values and it's going to fight for our United States. Because I want to get the cab red again. I want to get our state staying red again. And uh, that's why we're stepping up. Thank y'all for having us this morning. And uh, love it. Thank you.
And thank you very much for your support of the DeKalb GOP. We really appreciate it. All right, well, let's welcome back Paulette Smith, and she's going to sing this little light of mine going to shine. All right.
spiritual warrior here. Yeah. Somebody yeah. who's taking care of us in the GOP and traveled all over the world. She's here with us to, for Black History Absolutely. in DeKalb County, a mixed yeah. group. I have chills on my legs right now because of that. Okay? Yeah. Just the fact that we're all here together and able to fellowship. And that's because of your chair. Marcy had that vision to make this happen, and I'm so thankful that you did. Follow in suit because she's been working very hard. And, and that's one of my things, honoring women. I'm the founder of the Georgia Women's mm -hmm. Monthly Mixer. We're in our eighth event. We're moving out of the Capitol to the Georgia Freight Depot. And we honor women like Marcy. Mm -hmm. People who deserve to be honored because they've been working. There's a difference between working for service and just working because you're serving. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Do you know the difference? You serve because you chose to serve. No one has to thank you for serving. No one ever thanked me for serving until I got the Thank you for serving. <laughs> well, I got you served our country. And so I just want to take this time to honor you and thank you. And, and now you can thank you. to come and take care of our communities. That's a big thing. So I want to share with you the power of prayer. Okay? I have a song out called The Foul Mouth Conservative. I was going to sing a little bit of it. I don't want to upstage anybody. <laughs> Then she get up and she say to me, Jamie, you're here very purposely. So don't you take no negativity. Learn you a lesson. Learn you, learn you a lesson. Change your perspective. You guys, this is hard to do without the music. <laughs> Let me let you know it is hard to do without the cadence. But learn you a lesson. Change your perspective. Okay, that's a part of the song. And I start that song when I say, hmm, ha. That's from my grandmother's prayer. Literally that prayer that she would pray for me as a child. And then I went into the Air Force. And the TIs and the drill instructors, they had a similar cadence. And they would say, hmm, ha, ah, as they tried to train me. And I learned to march to cadence and, and develop discipline skills. Same thing in, in the police academy. When I went to the police academy, same thing. Hmm, ha. Ah, they had you stepping in a cadence. You had to learn a cadence to be in control, to learn whatever it was they were trying to teach you. In this country that we're in right now, we as the GOP and the Republican Party need to be in the same cadence. Amen. Yes. We need to move forward in the spiritual battle that we have before us and what's happening in our school systems and to our children. Amen. We need people like Dr. Alveda King to stand up and say we're one race. That's right. That's not for debate. That's scientific fact. I'm an exercise physiologist from Georgia State University. I'm here to tell you that we're one race. When you go to the hospital, there's just one race. And so we need spiritual warriors to intercede and come before us and bring that message to our country and to people who are willing to listen and change their hearts and come together like we did here today for Black History. Yeah. Yeah. This isn't my first time introducing Dr. King. It's just my second time. And we all know her legacy. We know her history, right? We know Alveda Celeste King is a loving mother, yeah. right? Yeah. That makes her a mother king. Yeah. <laughs> we know Dr. Alveda in her home has a series. Even on Fox TV, they talked about it. She's fed everybody. Even Ginger Howard, different people. She comes, fellowship, cook right there in front of them. You know what that makes her? Her cookbooks? A culinary king. <laughs> service to this state, making her a service king. Yeah. 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 
And so we just recently saw yesterday, and I just Google her all the time, not just because she's my friend and I want to see what she's up to, but because I know there's something profound that I get to share when I talk to people and try to change their hearts. Yeah. And so Fox News reported 19 hours ago on Alveda, news commentator, King, that we are one race. Yeah. Yeah. One race. Yeah. And so with that being said, the honorable, the incredible Dr. Alveda King from <laughs> National Thank you, Dr. Tell us they're pro-life. 
And they probably are. But they have no intention of passing the bill. So they run on oh, pro-life and all this. Anybody here from National Right to Life, Georgia Right to Life? Y'all know I'm telling the truth. I'll just go ahead and tell it. So then they go in the committee room. They've already cut the deal and they know they're not going to pass it. So then they, they let the other guys be the bad guys and it gets stuck in committee. So when the Martin Luther King Jr. bill was stuck in committee, and some of our colleagues, honestly, I was a state legislator, and Marcy and Dick Lane was there back then, and me. So one of the bills we were passing, and this, you know, if you're in human traffic and domestic violence and all that, you'll get this. So we were just very aware that women were suffering, little boys and little girls were being trafficked and all this. So I introduced a bill. And the bill said that the courts could determine if anyone was a victim or a perpetrator of domestic violence, trafficking, anything, the people who were the victims could get counseling and the people who were doing it could get counseling. And so the bill was stuck in committee, right? So I raised my head on the floor, Mr. Speaker, I still have a picture on my mantle. And I was young and cute back then too. <laughs> <laughs> no, that really did help, really. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, is it not true that women are being hit upside the head at home? And I look so sad because it's true. I know it was. And then Dick Lane gets up. Mr. Speaker, gentleman from the whatever district, is it not true that sometimes women need to be hit upside the head? Oh. Now he said that on the floor of the house. Wow. Oh. Wow. So guess what those guys who had women at home had to do? They had to get that bill out of the thing quick. <laughs> and it actually passed. So that law that hit the books. And then it even said you could get a professional counselor, a counselor, a doctor, a preacher, or whatever. Let me tell you one more bill I passed. I was young back then, having still having babies and all that. So I'm on the way to the down to the Capitol. And I get mad because I'm always late, Chris, quiet. <laughs> tried to get in there, and so the lights kept stopping. So I thought, and you could go into your legislative council, you get there and you say, I need a bill, write this up, do this and that. I said, I'm tired of sitting at the light. I mean, just need to turn right. Nothing is coming. We need a right, turn right on red bill. <laughs> <laughs> now, okay, look, the author of that bill was a mama frustrated trying to get to work. <laughs> Truth comes, this little light of mine, when the light shines, call it, 
when the lights come on, people say, wait a minute, I need to rethink think this. It's not about a party. It ought to be about God. Amen. God Almighty. Amen. So this is where we are now, which is why we see this. I, I was telling you when I came in, I uh, was over in Alabama. <clears throat> when? Yesterday? Yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> and then we flew from... We flew from Orlando to Alabama, went to a Republican event, and then drove back to Atlanta. Here I am this morning. I have my okay. And the pandemic, I actually did have COVID, and I ended up with something called brain freeze, and it was a mess. <laughs> <laughs> I was still recovered from it, but no restaurant and no hospital and all that stuff, but I did. So, so here I am, but in Alabama, honestly, there was an award given to a group of people called a strike force or a strike team. Strike force, strike team. And so we are strike team. We hit in Georgia, but we hit all over America with this truth. Now, I was saying, tell Georgia to have this too. Has anybody been throttled on social media? Throttled means they just, um, you used to have a million or two million or more. Now you have one life. Right. One life. Right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I'm proud of, but I still get out there to a certain extent, and I can get some things out. I do have a show on Fox Nation where I have a studio kitchen and I have my own home kitchen. My home kitchen is my test kitchen. I cook, but I talk about issues a little bit too. So I can, I'm can. i learning to fly under the radar a little bit. Oh, yeah. And if you can do that, learn how to do it, because we still need to be out there. Right? Yes. And it's the truth. Nobody really goes to websites anymore. So you have to do some social media. And then you have to do some of these kind of, and you laugh because you on TikTok. You younger than I am. You can be on TikTok. <laughs> I showed up on TikTok because of my five-year-old granddaughter. I was stalking doing something called shadowing her. So I popped on TikTok. And I said, I said, this is the day that the Lord has made. TikTok. And I jump off. She's, what are you doing on TikTok? <laughs> 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 so please do your social media if you're not doing it please do it it still has a purpose so don't give up on it and I would tell my children I'm almost there <laughs> you're fine. when they were little and they're grown now with children their own but there was something called Teenage Ninja Turtles you ever heard of that? Oh, yeah. and at first they were really really bad they were not nice at first so my children they would stay with me sometimes and sometimes with daddy he'd let them watch I wouldn't so I said, we got to figure this thing out. <laughs> so one day they all come in. I turn on Teenage Ninja Turtles. Well, why are we watching that? We're going to pray for the turtles. That they get <laughs> We're going to pray for the producers, the people who get money, the people who watch it. Lord, please save the, the Transformers and the Teenage Ninja Turtles. <laughs> so I don't know what's out there now because they're older. And, but I still like Superman and Batman and all this stuff. <laughs> so people say, are you really a Christian if you watch that stuff? I try to stay connected to the youth. We have to stay connected to the youth. In any way we can. We need to go to church. If your church is not congregated in my church, believe it's Bible Christian Church, Pastor Theo and his wife, the lead pastors, we had parking lot church. And we were all out there whether it was cold or hot or rainy. Hallelujah, all in the parking lot on Facebook. It worked. So just think about things that way. This is a report. I told you about the strike team. I'm at America First Policy Institute as the chairman of the Center for the American Dream. I like that uh, Martin had a dream. I really do. I do too. Yeah. 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 Give, give <laughs> Why? And when we didn't explain why, we sounded like we were racist. 
Because critical race theory, anybody here's race, if you got a heart of compassion, you want race to be good for everybody. Right. right. Yeah. So we didn't say there's one human race, one blood, one race. We didn't say Margaret Sanger was such a CRT supporter, critical yeah. race theory. And Charles Darwin, who yeah. said that there yeah. was a superior Aryan race. Uh -huh. See, we didn't teach that. Yeah. So we seem to be very racist because we didn't say why. Critical race theory is racist, period. Yeah. Yeah. So we won't support a racist concept, but we have to explain it in 140 characters or less, and I'm still trying to figure that out. Because <laughs> I can't, I'm not gonna have, nobody's gonna listen to everything I've said right now, it takes too long. So we're still trying to figure that out. But it is racist because, because guess what, I'm looking around, and my hair, all of my hair is totally white, really. I uh, put some dye that was too strong, so it's shedding right now. It'll come back, I hope, pray for my hair. No joke in the name of Jesus. And you have your phone on, good Lord. That's what they think of, that's what I I almost lost my thought. But as I look around, I see different hair textures, different hair colors, and that's a good thing. But our race is not determined by our hair color nor our skin color. Nobody looks like a white piece of paper or a black piece of charcoal, actually, without the blue and purple and magentas that show through that skin. I'm we are human. I'm huh? pink and tan. You what? I'm pink and tan. Pink and tan. I know, I used to say that. Cause, but you know, the first time I did that, and I did it with no finesse, because I was so tired. Well, I'm white, and you're a person of color. <laughs> I said, you're not even white, you're pink. And then they turn red. <laughs>
She's a singer songwriter. That's really cute. What? And Damon is a singer, well, a rapper songwriter. <laughs> now listen to me, I, you know, in 19, around the 90s, the God said, and you're gonna rap. And I'm, God, rap is of the devil. You certainly couldn't be telling me that I'm going to rap. And I tried not to. I started writing songs called Rain Rap back then. It became Let It Rain later. Towards the end of the year, at the end of the 90s, he gave me the bridge. Finally went in the studio. But look, I had to go to rap school <laughs> to do this. So I'm going to rap just a little bit in the song, running through the fire, through the hurt and pain. Joy of my desire, you cleanse me with your rain. I'm talking about abortion, human trafficking, everything you can conceive. And then here, here's the rap. Don't you laugh at the other I mean it. <laughs> it's silly, this old bird rapping this song. I know they'd be laughing, saying I'm wrong. I'm not afraid of looking the fool. They're not gonna get this just going to school. Can somebody help them make them understand there's more to life than booty, they need a master plan. Oh, that's <laughs> identity politics to capture the black vote. That was clear when he ran for president in 2020 and long before. He would rather be cynical than promise real solutions to the problems facing black communities. Yeah. Now that's really the truth. That's right. I think it's brilliant at AFP. I always celebrated Black History Month. Not the, not the bad history, we need to fix that. It needs to be corrected. Yeah. We know that. But there is so much good. Yes. Yes. Dr. Ken Blackwell, Ambassador Ken Blackwell, over the Center for Voter Integrity, says black history is American history. Mm -hmm. yes. Yes. Now, this is one thing I said. Tell me I don't need a voter ID. You just said you don't count. We just want your mark. So do I go back and be a slave and put an X on there? I don't need identity? You gonna steal my identity? Take it away from me? Yes. Yes. No, I do have an identity. Yes. And 
and I want my American identity. Yes. Amen. I'm a Christ loving, Frederick Douglass Republican. Yes.